This video is going to give you some strategies for helping our students who have English as a second language. Now, unlike most of my presentations, you'll find that quite a lot of the slides have got a lot of text on them. You can uh, pause the video to read the text. I'm also going to provide a link to the full presentation. So why, who, how and what? Why do we need to help uh, these students? Who in our community are we supporting? How are we already supporting them? And what tools can we use to further support these students? That's where the uh, practical advice comes in. So why in the context of our school, the IB and the world? At AIS, our students speak a huge variety of languages, from Dutch to Italian to French to German to Spanish. Many of our students speak a different language at home than, than English, and so we need to support those students to develop their English fully. If you look at our school's mission statement, we want to develop every child fully. We want our students to be multilingual and we want them to be able to be successful in a global community. Now, if you look at the IB, they have their ATLs, their approaches to learning, which include being able to use different speaking techniques to speak to a variety of people or audiences, and also to be able to listen actively to others' perspectives. The IB's mission statement also uh, wants our students to be successful in a global world. And obviously globalisation is happening. As English is very widely spoken, this will help students to be successful in our global world. We have students joining us from all over the world, many who have English as a second language and it's very strong, many who are totally new to English. So how are we already supporting our students? Firstly, we have mother tongue classes, the so students can still develop whatever language they speak at home. We have ESOL classes, we have a focus on ATLs, we have resource classes and we also treat all teachers as language teachers. So I like this quote about measuring language ability. It says it's typically managed in two active parts, speaking and writing, and two passive parts, listening and reading. So we need to help students develop all four skills. There are many ways that we can support these students. I'm just going to show some practical tips, including some technology tools. So the first skill is reading. It's important when you're learning a new language that you're uh, acquiring new vocabulary. Um, you can do this through giving kids vocabulary lists, writing keywords on the board, um, or giving them access to resources that they can change the reading level. So the key is to simplify the language, but not the content. One of the tools that I really like is Britannica. It's obviously a well-known encyclopedia, so it has articles about stuff that will be relevant to all their subjects and all different topics. I really like that when you go into the middle school or high school platform or the primary school platform, you can be looking at article and then you can change the reading level, but the appearance stays the same. So if a high school student wants to look at an article but make the reading level easier, the students around them don't necessarily need to know that they're reading at an easier level. Um, and it doesn't make it look babyish. It's the same content, just in an easier vocabulary. They can also hear the words out loud. If they get really stuck, they can translate some of the words as well as it has a built-in Google Translate tool. And again, the content is still the same. Now, Botanica is a really useful resources for all of our students. So it doesn't mean that ESL students will be doing something else. Other students can work on this. If students are working on a group with an ESL student, they can still be looking at um, the same resources, just at different levels. So this is what Britannica looks like, and you can get access to this through our library website. The next skill we want to do is listening. So acquiring a new language is important, um, especially hearing it out loud, because you might speak a language at home where different letters are pronounced in a different way. So definitely hearing it out loud is important. So some of the things that have been recommended in my reading were sitting um, ESL students at the front of the class at the beginning, maybe sitting with them with someone else who can help translate, but again, not making that a force. So when they can sit with their own friends and not relying too heavily on the other student, and also chunking the lessons. They're not having to deal with a huge amount of um, vocabulary and having to listen to a lot at a time, just small chunks. As this makes it more manageable. A resource that I really like, which our school has access to, is ListenWise. It gives us access to three to six minute long NPR stories. So they're super interesting, and high quality, and they cover all different issues from social justice to science. Um, I really like some of the built-in tools they have. So for ESL students, they can slow down the audio. There's different activities for them to do. Some they do after listening and some they actually do while they're listening. There's quizzes that check for understanding. 
They can also view the transcript and the stories often come with vocabulary lists. A uh, benefit to other students is that they're awesome stories and super interesting no matter your English level. We have full access to the premium account, so please send me an email for the password. Speaking is also an important skill for our students to learn and practice. Um, it can be intimidating if they're going from class to class and being expected to answer questions in front of the whole group. So it's definitely good to get them to practice in small groups with a partner or to use different tools to help them to record videos. So I really like the tool Recap. It allows you to pose a question and you can pose that question as text or as a video and then the students each respond with a video. After you've seen all the responses, you can either pick for it to randomly select um, a series of videos to make a little video with music underneath and frame and pretty frames um, to show some of the students' responses or you can select. So that means the students can respond uh, privately when they're recording their video. They can watch the response of their peers that they share out and if you're choosing the best ones, that really gives them a reward for the work they're doing. CAP is a lot of fun and it's also important for all students, not just ESL students, to practice their speaking skills. So here's a screenshot from Recap. Normally students answer them privately, however we did an experiment where we had kids working in a group and it worked really nicely. So writing. Writing is also an important skill for language learners to acquire. Um, sometimes students don't learn this skill because they're learning English through watching TV or through socialising. Sometimes writing can be the most difficult skill. That also includes students who have a mother tongue language that they speak fluently at home. They might need to develop their writing skills there. I recommend giving students freedom to choose a presentation tool that they like the best or one that's easy to use so they can focus more on the content instead of the appearance. Um, you can also have students, especially if they're very new to English, um, in their presentation just have the keywords or short phrases instead of having a huge amount of content like they did with, with an essay. So possible choices, these are all free, Microsoft Sway, Adobe Spark Pages, Keynote, Emails, Haiku Deck if they have an iPad, same with Explain Everything, Google Slides, PowerPoint and even Nearpod. Uh, benefits to students, they don't have to produce those lengthy essays, they can show the keywords and important phrases and there's less pressure than maybe writing an essay. And then benefits to other students, all students can produce high quality work when they're using presentation tools. Um, if you want them to do more text, they could write a script to go along with it if you wanted them to produce more vocabulary. So some more tools that I'm just going to highlight as well just to support our students. BriefTube, it's a Chrome extension which um, provides transcript for all YouTube videos. Um, the Day, which is an online newspaper for schools, contains a word bank and is in a child-friendly language. Newzella or Newzella or New ZLA. Really interesting articles and you can change the Lexile level. TED Ed, short interesting animated videos from TED Talks. Uh, and students, students can choose to view subtitles. Grammarly, it's an extension for Chrome which helps students to uh, improve their grammar. Duolingo, gamified language learning and you'll find that it has a um, English for people that have a variety of mother tongue languages. And also our library has a wide range of resources to support all students, including audiobooks, books, magazines, and more. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to support you in any way, and please share your tips with me.